Okay, so welcome to this next video in the playlist on cancer. In this video, uh, we're going to look at Burkitt's lymphoma. And this is a rather um, nice example as far as studying it is concerned. Uh, horrible if you actually get it. Um, but um, as far as studying it is concerned, Burkitt's lymphoma is a very nice example of a gain of function mutation that is due to uh, the translocation of a proto-oncogene uh, so that it is now regulated by the uh, promoter region of another gene and the promoter region to that other gene is far more active than the promoter region to the proto-oncogene so you get overexpression of the, onco uh, the proto-oncogene turning it into an oncogene and giving it a gain of function mutation. Okay, so let's talk about this. Right, so firstly, let me describe to you what Burkitt's lymphoma is. So let me give you a brief introduction to what Burkitt's lymphoma is, what a lymphoma is for the start. Then we'll talk in detail about this tro chromosomal translocation and how this represents an example of how you can get a gain of function mutation. Uh, then what we'll talk about is uh, what this actually leads to, i.e. complete overproliferation in the lymph node. I'll um, show you um, the structure of the lymph node and uh, then discuss uh, how it presents usually and what it looks like. And then finally we'll talk about how uh, the initial mutation that you get, which is a gain of function mutation in MYC, is actually going to, um, is actually going to lead to um, a malignant tumour, because at first it's just going to overproliferate, and that will be a benign tumour. We'll discuss um, how it's then going to propagate into a malignant um, uh, tumour, right, and that which is cancer. Right, so what is a lymphoma, firstly? Burkitt is just some uh, physician who, um, who uh, first described this condition. Now, a lymphoma basically is a tumour of the lymph nodes. Okay, so a tumour of the lymph nodes, and in lymphoma, the lymph nodes basically grow to massive sizes, and in Burkitt's lymphoma, they uh, do indeed grow into massive sizes. Tumour of the lymph nodes. Right, okay, so uh, this type of lymphoma is specifically a tumour of B cells. B cells which are sitting within uh, the B cell follicles within lymph nodes. So actually, firstly, let's, let's start off with the structure of a lymph node and then we'll remind ourselves of where the B cells are and then we'll see what's going to happen within these B cells. Okay, so the structure of a lymph node. So let's draw the structure of a lymph node. So I need to do this carefully. So there are loads of incoming lymph vessels all over the lymph node, like so. So these are all incoming lymph, no uh, lymph vessels that I'm drawing in here. Okay, so this is an incoming lymph vessel, another incoming lymph vessel here, and another one here. Right, and then you also have a big outgoing lymph vessel which we'll draw here. So this is the outgoing lymph vessel which is taking lymph from the lymph node and then it will carry it well, onwards. So this is an outgoing lymph node. And all the rest are our incoming lymph nodes. And you'll notice they're slightly smaller. I've drawn them slightly smaller than um, the, um, the outgoing lymph... Oh, sorry, that's not a lymph node. Outgoing lymph vessel. I do apologise. This is an outgoing lymph vessel or an outgoing lymphatic vessel, okay, and these are all incoming lymph vessels. This structure in the middle is the lymph node, so these are incoming lymph vessels. Right, so um, what happens is the lymph comes in through these incoming lymph vessels, so let's draw it coming in, and we'll draw this in green, because lymph is generally sort of represented as green, so it's all coming in this way in through these lymph vessels, like so. And basically, it's going, to, um, it's going to go into a peripheral sinus around the edge of the lymph node. So, around the edge of the lymph node, there is a peripheral sinus full of lymph, basically. 
like so. Okay, so this sinus is a space around the edge of the lymph node into which the lymph can go. So this is the lymph in this peripheral sinus around the edge of the lymph node. It's called specifically the marginal sinus. So this is the marginal sinus around the edge of the lymph node. So the marginal sinus. Right, and now underneath, more, uh, more centrally, uh, uh, within the uh, mar uh, marginal sinus, is uh, the cortex of the lymph node. So let me show the cortex. Okay, so here's the cortex. And then inside the cortex, you then have something known as the paracortex. And then right at the center, you have the medulla, which is connected to the outgoing uh, lymph vessel. So this is the medulla here. Right, so in order for the lymph to go from the marginal sinus to the medulla, so it's going to go from the marginal sinus into the medulla here, and then go out of the outgoing lymph vessel like this, it has to pass through these two layers of the lymph node. So this outer layer here, which is the cortex of the lymph node, so this is the cortex, and also this inner layer here, which is the paracortex. Okay, now, uh, oops, paracortex. Okay, now in the cortex, you have some special structures known as B-cell follicles, and these look like spherical structures which are made up of just masses of cells. So these B-cell follicles in the cortex. Okay, so let's do those in an orange color. Okay, so these are the B-cell follicles, and these are basically full up of B-lymphocytes. Okay, and then in the cortex and the paracortex, you then have uh, T lymphocytes. So the B cell follicles here, this is a B cell follicle, and it's absolutely bursting full of B lymphocytes. And then in the cortex and the paracortex, which I'll shade in blue here, these are filled with, full with um, T lymphocytes, okay? So the two types of lymphocyte. B lymphocytes and T lymphocytes, they both hang out in the lymph nodes. Uh, the T lymphocytes are in the cortex and the paracortex, whereas the B lymphocytes are exclusively in these B cell follicles. So these contain the B lymphocytes here, B lymphocytes, and the cortex and the paracortex surrounding the B cell follicles, this stuff here, this contains the T lymphocytes. Okay, so in order for the lymph to go from the marginal sinus to uh, the medulla of the lymph node and then out the uh, outgoing lymph vessel, it has to percolate basically through all of these B lymphocytes and through these T lymphocytes and uh, basically anything nasty in this lymph is going to uh, set off an immune response basically. That's the purpose of these lymph nodes. They are um, they're like a, well, they're a guard, basically. They are looking for trouble, basically. And anything coming through here, uh, they're going to spot it if it's nasty, basically. Okay, so um, what happens in Burkitt's lymphoma, then, is you basically get a tumour of these B cells. So this is what's going to go wrong in Burkitt's lymphoma. You're going to get a tumour of one of these B cells. So one of these B cells is going to um, get a mutation that leads it to completely overdivide. That's going to cause the B cell follicle to become absolutely massive, and I mean massive. The lymph node is going to be just swollen by this massive great B cell follicle. Okay, so let me describe the mutation that is going to occur in one of these initial B cells. So let's take one of the B cells out of this B cell follicle and let's have a look at what mutation is going to happen to it. So let's say this is the B cell here and here's the nucleus of the B cell. Then we know in the nucleus of the B cell you have 46 chromosomes and the chromosomes come in pairs known as homologous pairs. So, in fact, you have 23 homologous pairs of chromosomes. 
and homologous pairs of chromosomes um, basically have the same genes on the chromosome. So they're coding for the same proteins, but you can have different alleles of each gene. And one of the chromosomes is your paternal, paternally inherited chromosome, and one of them is maternally inherited. So let's draw these. So chromosome 1, chromosome 2, all the way down to the 23rd um, homologous pair. So you'll have two chromosome 1s, which I'll draw a bit more interesting than that, so I'll draw them like this, maybe. Okay, uh, so here's your other chromosome 1. And then you'll have two chromosome 2s, and then it'll go on, and you'll go all the way down to the 23rd one. And let's say this uh, person is a female, so they have two X chromosomes. So here's an X chromosome, and here's another X chromosome. Right, and it's a bit inaccurate because the X chromosome is nowhere near as big as chromosome 1. Uh, but um, you have these 23 pairs of homologous chromosomes. Now, basically what is going to happen is you're going to get a chromosomal translocation between chromosome 8 and chromosome 14. And we're talking about one of your chromosome 8s. So let's say we take out one of your chromosome 8s here. And I'm going to denote it like this, with these two parallel lines. And these two parallel lines denote the two complementary strands of DNA. Let's also take one of your chromosome 14s. Okay, so of these, the two homologous pairs, you have two chromosome 8s and two chromosome 14s. I've said, take one of chromosome 8 and one chromosome 14. Okay, and we'll continue this discussion in the next.